Hi everybody, Physics Ninja. Today what I want to do is I want to look at the problem of the man on the boat. Alright, so here we've got it sketched out initially at the top. I've got a boat that has a length L, which is 6 meters. Uh, the boat has a mass of 30 kilograms. And the man on the boat has a mass of 100 kilograms. My, what a big boy you are. And what we're going to do now is he's going to walk across to the other side. So he's going to travel, he's going to walk 5 meters on the boat. Okay, uh, at the end what I want to do is I want to find out how far does the boat move as he's walking across. All right? If you imagine if this was a ship with a mass of you know, hundreds of thousands of kilograms, right? if you just have one dude walking across, it's not going to move very much. But in this case, the mass of the boat is only 30 kilograms. And the guy walking across it is bigger, it has more mass than the boat. So in this case, it will move back a considerable amount. Now, this is the type of problem you find typically after looking at uh, momentum. They kind of tuck this into the momentum chapter, and it has to do with the position of the center of mass of a system. In this case, the man and the boat form a system, and there are no forces acting on the system. Although this sits in water, we are assuming there's no forces between the water and the boat. The only forces involved in the problem are the action-reaction pairs of the friction between his feet and the boat, okay? That produces a force, and then his boat on his feet. Those are the two forces. So as he's walking, he's pushing on the boat, right? So there's a force acting on the boat that makes it move to the left. There's also a force acting on his foot, his force of friction, which is making him, allowing him to move forward, so the key to this problem is we have to find the position of the center of mass before and after. And since there's no net force acting on the system, that center of mass position must be the same. And the only way you can reconcile that is if the boat moves back. So let me show you what I mean. I'll show you kind of a quick way and then a more mathematical approach. All right, let's go ahead and solve this problem. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to find what is this position of the center of mass. So I've got a guy here who's one meter from the edge, which I've denoted as this position right here. And I've got the boat, which has a total mass of 30 kilograms. However, for the boat, I'm going to assume that you can represent that whole mass of the boat by a, a point mass here of 30 kilograms. So we basically have two point masses. We have the man, which is 100 kilograms, who's one meter away from the edge. And we've got the boat, whose center of mass is right here at the midpoint of the boat. So let's go ahead and calculate the position of the center of mass. So we need to pick a position. Where are we going to calculate it from? What I'm going to do is I'm going to assume I'm going to calculate it relative to this position here. I'm going to call this my origin. okay? And I'm going to calculate everything relative to this position right here. Okay, so how would I use it? Well, you need the equation for the center of mass. Um, in this case, there's two objects, so I'm going to have mass of the man multiplied by its position, right, x of the man relative to my coordinate system that I want to choose, plus the mass of the boat, plus its position of the center of mass of the boat. All of this gets divided by the total mass. The total mass is the mass of the man plus... Uh, the mass of the boat. Okay, we could substitute our numbers over here. So the position of the center of mass. Uh, mass of the man, we have 100 kg. He is 1 meter away from my origin in positive 1. Plus the mass of the boat here is 30 kg. And its position now, well, the whole boat has a length of 6. So I represent this 30 kilograms as a distance of 3 away. And now the total mass of the boat here ends up being 100 plus 30. All right, we put that, everything in the calculator. Uh, so what you get over here should be uh, 100 plus 90. All of this over 130. Okay, that should give me a position of the center of mass, if I did the calculation right, of 1.46 uh, meters. Okay, and that is really my position right here. So let me just kind of underline that in purple. And again, I've shown that position on the diagram, right? And I knew that it was going to be somewhere here because, well, 
again, if I have a mass here and I have another mass over here, it's going to be somewhere between both of those masses. And actually, it's going to be a little bit closer to the man than to the center of the boat because uh, the man is more massive, right? This is kind of like a weighted average. And uh, if you have heavy things or things with more mass, the position of the center of mass is going to be closer to that object. So that's why it's really only 46 centimeters away from the man. All right, now let's think about what happens after, once he walks to the other side. All right, what I want to do now is let's consider what happens if he walks across the boat. Okay. And again, we're going to assume now that he's one meter from the back. So if I was going to calculate the position of the center of mass now, well, again, it, it's pretty easy to figure out where it's going to be, right? It's going to be between the center of mass of the boat and wherever the guy's standing. And, you know, if I was going to guess, I'd probably guess it'd be kind of right around here. Well, let's go ahead and calculate it, right? Let's place my origin over here. So if he walked across and he's one meter from the edge of the boat, that means he's now five meters away from this end, right? That means this distance here is five. Well, we can go ahead and calculate the center of mass relative to this position, right? We're going to call it center of mass for uh, the second part over here. And well, what do we have? We've got a hundred kilogram man who's now five meters away from the point where I want to evaluate the center of mass. And we've got the mass of the boat, which is still 30. And that's position right here should be still three meters. All of this divided by the total mass, 100 plus 30. Or we put all of this in the calculator and guess what we get? We get uh, 4.54. Okay, that's the position of the center of mass. Actually, it's it's six, the whole length of the boat minus this distance. All right, now it's like, well, how did that happen? Why did the center of mass change positions? We know we can't have that. The physics really doesn't want that. So the only way to kind of square this is if we're going to move this center of mass by a certain distance because we don't want, right? We really require that the change of the center of mass has to be equals to zero. So what we want to do is we don't want it to move. So really what we want is for the center of mass and kind of this part here um, to move a certain distance. In this case, it has to move a certain distance D in order to be aligned with the first one. So let's go kind of figure that out. So let me kind of do a little motion of the boat here. So how would I line those up exactly? Well, again, I would have to have a picture that looks kind of something like this. Let me try to move it all the way to the side. Now you can see that the position of the center of mass, they are aligned with each other. And this is really what I require. So how far do I actually have to move this? What is this distance D that I have to move in order for these two positions to be aligned with each other? It ends up just being the difference between both positions. Okay, so you really have something like this, that 4.54 minus this displacement and a negative because I'm shifting it that way has to be equal to the position 1.46. Okay, at the end, you could swap both of those, swap the position, you get 4.54 minus 1.46 equals to my displacement. And at the end, you put that in the calculator, what you get is a displacement which is 3.08 meters. Okay, and it really has to shift to the left direction over here in order to align them up. Otherwise, you'd have this center of mass kind of down here, but there can't be any shift in the position of the center of mass because there's no force acting on the system. And if you wanted to show it kind of slightly different way, maybe not, but um, this is how I would do it. Uh, again, the position of the center of mass, that once it's shifted, those positions have to be aligned. So you still want it to be 1.46. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that same origin over here to calculate the position of the center of mass. I still want it to be 1.46. The only thing that changes is how you define all these distances. So for the man, um, he's no longer one away from this line. Um, now, this distance of the man from my origin right here would be five and minus whatever distance it shifted, okay? So this guy right here, the distance from the man to the origin would be five minus D, okay? And D would be the amount that the boat shifted back. 
So that's kind of what I would write over here, 5 minus d. And now you also have to consider the center of mass of the canoe, which was originally here, but now it moved back. It moved back a certain distance d. So you have 30 kilograms, which is no longer at just 3 meters away from this point, because this point is now shifted back a certain distance d. So I would have 3 minus d would be the distance of the center of mass of the canoe, wherever that falls. Okay, then all of that still gets divided by the total mass, which is 130. All right, if you do a little bit of math now, you should find that if I group all the terms with D on one side and all the other ones over here, I would have 100 multiplied by 5 plus uh, 30 multiplied by 3. And all the other terms now would end up looking like minus 130 multiplied by D. And all of this still gets divided by 130. All right, you can kind of see where this is going now. Uh, this term over here will simply be minus D. <laughs> and now all of these terms, this will be 500 and this will be 90 over 130 gives me the 4.54 that I previously had. And all of this has to be the position of the center of mass, which we said still must be 1.46. All right, again, if you swap those two, you can find that D is equal to uh, 3.08 meters. Okay, so the boat actually shifts back 3.08 meters, which is why I have the center of mass of the boat a little bit on this side over here. I have to redraw the diagram so it makes sense. All right, these problems are not easy when you first try to solve them, okay, because you're kind of defining all these distances maybe relative to different coordinate systems. So it's kind of important just to uh, have an approach that's consistent and gets you to the right answer. All right, thanks for watching, folks.